Hello, hello, my name is Jordan and I'm your host, back at it again, you know the vibes. And today we are joined by a very, very, very special guest who's very dear to our team and forever blooming in general. Today we have Melody, give it up. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> I'm super excited to be here to talk about this topic today. Uh, my name is Melody. As Jordan said, my pronouns are she, her, and yeah, I've been with Forever Blooming for six months. It's been a really good time, and I've met so many great people in the we process. We love to see it. We love to see it. I I love that this is a total side note, and I'm trying not to get off topic, but I just had to mention that. I kind of love that our team is just like really small and also just close-knit, 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 <laughs> and we all have some sort of fun connections and games and stuff like that, and it's really cool. I love the team. They're amazing people. They're lovely. <laughs> and today, we are going to be talking about the sort of Latinx experience with mental health and the sort of stigmas behind it, but more specifically, and we will be talking a little bit about Melody's position in Forever Blooming, what she does, and how that position intertwines with mental health, as well as just her sort of mental health advocacy journey or her mental health journey in general as a person, or just, again, mental health in general. So. Next, we will then be talking about the sort of stigmas within the Latinx community against mental health, and of course we cannot exclude the external stigmas against the Latinx community and mental health because, you know, those sort of external uh, stigmas can also affect how internal stigmas uh, work, <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> and then lastly, we will be talking about how those sort of stigmas within those uh, the Latinx community affected Ma Melody's life, almost called you Melody, and, and how she navigates her life due to the sort of stigma and how this has affected her thought processes, behaviors, etc. So, of course, we're super excited to start this episode, but, of course, for the old listeners who listen to every episode, if you do listen to every episode, you're amazing. I love you. <laughs> but for the new listeners, um, we do a Rose Thorn Bud segment. And if you don't know, a rose is a highlight, success, small win, or something positive that happened today or within the last week. A thorn is a challenge you experience or something you can use more support with. And a bud are some new ideas that have blossomed or something that you're looking forward to knowing more about or experiencing. And with that being said, I usually talk about my rose thorn bud every single episode. I know you guys are sick of hearing it, so you know I'm gonna let Melody do it instead so you can be sick of her. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it away. <laughs> I'm no, I'm okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> so, for my rose, um, we had our creators for a cause event yesterday. So that was Saturday. And it was just, it was really successful. There was so many artists and creatives there that shared their art that was tied into mental health. And it was really cool to see that the power that art has in lifting people's voices and spreading messages and it was just a really good time seeing even if it was a small portion of the community come together seeing people able to share their art in a comfortable safe space um but yeah that's my rose it was a good time a thorn my speakers on my computer are broken i don't know if they're working or if they're not working maybe happened <laughs> i don't know but we're still getting through this. Maybe that's like a first world problem. <laughs> but, you know, it sucks when like you do whenever your work is like tied to like a device. So it's kind of putting a halt on my work stuff right now, which kind of sucks. But it's okay. And then a bud. I feel like I say this like at all our meetings that we have. But <laughs> I just am always really excited to learn about anything social media or like graphic design and stuff like that so right now i'm actually at my job i'm like i messed with the embroidery stuff on i think it was this past week and 
I was able to do like a design for my stocking that's gonna get embroidered and maybe I'll show that on Instagram or something. I'm definitely, I want to show the Forever Bloom pod peeps and see what y'all think of that. But yeah, <laughs> I'm just always really excited to be more knowledgeable about like design and anything in that world that can kind of help me boost my social media. What is it called? Yeah, Presence? I know. Mm, anything that can boost like, <laughs> I guess my social media knowledge too, because they all fall like under the same thing. Being able to commute, communicate messages through graphics is what I'm excited for. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> but what are yours? I'm excited. From... <laughs> yeah, so, you know, center of attention. <laughs> no. <laughs> are you a Leo? My hero thorn bud. Are you? I, I literally am a Leo. Chill no out. way. <laughs> yeah, I am a Leo. <laughs> I was born in August. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> that's chill out chill out <laughs> okay so <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> okay so uh, my rose of the week of course had to be created for a cause as well because I just absolutely I was let me admit to you guys I have to let you guys know that I was nervous I was so anxious and I was like literally a mess before the event not gonna lie but even though it turned out smoothly despite all the sort of technical difficulties my heart was happy and it was like that sort of community event and like community um vibe sort of uh what's the word i'm looking for the um sort of togetherness of the uh event and just coming together to share art share a personal part of themselves through art it was kind of just nice so yeah it's definitely um my rose of the week for sure um wait wait but i gotta mention another rose because I'm, I'm a little what's up i just Tell have us. to mention this <laughs> um <laughs> since it is nearing the end of the year and i am on on virtual school i have like different deadlines for different classes so I just finished my final exams last week for two classes, so I only am left down to two more high school classes and I am completely done with high school in general and I am so excited! <laughs> I'm so excited to graduate. <laughs> but um, yeah, just creatives for a cause and just... Uh, completing my final exam and completing those classes was nice but then my thorn my thorn would probably have to be that my manager at my job has just been a complete debbie downer <laughs> like she is always lecturing somebody even though i'm like a really good worker not to brag she still finds ways to nitpick everything I do and it's been really aggravating my nerves but you know I, I can't I can't do more I, I can't like make sure that everything I do is perfectly aligned with what you want me to do I, I can't but anyway um, but then my bud on the positive side of that um, I'm really really looking forward to Christmas because I love Christmas and I love the Christmas spirit. And yeah, I think I actually might be going to Colorado, which isn't that appealing to me, but I also like, <laughs> because like, I feel like I don't find people that are just like, oh yeah, I'm going to Colorado for vacation. It's gonna be so exciting. But it's more like, I'm excited to experience something new at least, but yeah that being said thank you guys for listening to our roast on bud segment and we will now move on to the actual episode what you guys are here for um <clears throat> that being said i do want to make the disclaimer that all the research that is used in this episode is based on united states statistics so that means that it may be different where you're from it may be higher it may be lower who knows but it is based on United States statistics, so keep that in mind while you're listening. But we will start off with 
talking about Melody's position. So what do you do, actually? <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, so I am the social media coordinator for Forever Blooming. So I do the Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. I plan out TikToks and Reels to do, and then I try to get people from the organization involved to do those. So Jordan has done one. Beth has done one. Um, I also have done one about Target. That was fun. I got to go to Target to do work. <laughs> and then basically just what I do is I help uplift Forever Blooming's voice and trying to push the mental health conversation through social media and just building our presence as well and our brand awareness just so we can have a bigger voice That's in awesome. the mental health community what do you do for right, yeah. like designing and stuff so i i because i really like see all of the work you produce and i'm so like blown away like how did you do that what do you what do you do when you're like designing stuff or creating ideas and stuff like that oh thank <laughs> you i've seen some of the stuff that you designed too oh. and i'm like they did that <laughs> it's so good but i I mean, I use Canva, like that's my main source of producing content whenever I do like social media graphics. I sometimes I have really creative moments where I'm able to be like, this is what's going to happen. This is what we're doing. And then there's other times where I can't think of anything mm. at <laughs> all. But I mean, throughout college, I was able to gain like experience about like fonts and stuff from my friends and also just knowledge that I've learned on my own throughout this like experience with social media you know I just kind of try to think about like what's the most important message and make sure there's like a hierarchy for the way the fonts are placed and stuff it's I guess I have like a very technical approach <laughs> but also creative I don't really know how to just like describe my design process because I really don't have one like a solidified <laughs> one just yet but yeah. <laughs> is there sort of any um, struggles when it comes to just like designing and stuff like that? Like compared to just like when you first started off or like how you are now or anything like that? Oh, for sure. Because there's sometimes where I see like what other people are putting out on social media and I'm like, I get very compare I guess. Is that a word? Yeah. <laughs> comparative? <laughs> is it comparative? comparative? I guess, mm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I start to compare, like, my work to what, like, other people are doing, and sometimes it can be, like, a good thing and a bad thing, because it makes me challenge myself, but also makes me be, be very critical of myself. But, I mean, I think sometimes I struggle with mainly, like, how it looks, and, like, how it's gonna fit in with the feed that is currently there and I think it's just a visual thing mm -hmm. and like a creative burnout thing because I as a creative I'm sure all creatives know this that as much as you want to avoid burnout it's inevitable because sometimes your brain can just not produce yeah but yeah I think also with just like creating art and stuff like that it's like I see these posts all the time that are just like Oh yeah, just draw every day, just write every day, just do etc. every day. But then yeah. at the same time, it's first of all, creative burnout is severe. <laughs> that Yes. I had like a creative burnout for like a year. <laughs> and that ugh. But um and then it's just like also the mental health aspect cuz I know mm -hmm. that when you don't feel like doing anything or just are not capable of doing anything in the moment, it's like why do I have to draw? Why do I have to write? Why do I? Well, I'm talking about my perspective from as an artist and a writer, but um, just gaining that motivation in general is kind of difficult. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, once you're in it, it's like hard to get out sometimes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But um, have you had any sort of insights? Have you had any sort of um, positive experience that you want to highlight about just being on the Forever Blooming team? Anything like that? Honestly, I think, like, the most positive one that I've had, there's so many, though. There has been a lot of, like, fulfilling things that have come out of this, especially with, like, being able to gain knowledge 
about my creative style and like experimenting with different types of things as well as being able to learn about mental health because whenever I'm on like those pages like that's a majority of what I see like on the feed is this is what OCD is this is what schizophrenia Mm -hmm. is and there's just so much information out there that you know it's been beneficial to be a part of this because I'm able to learn about mental health I think that's maybe just the most positive aspect about all of this is I don't know if you're like looking for like positive within the organization or like positive like with my position say okay free your heart say what you (laughs) need to say (laughs) I think that's the most fulfilling I think that's the most fulfilling thing is just being able to learn about everything mental health and you know see that there's people who are like feeling what you're feeling and Mm -hmm. yeah and also being able to just push that conversation as well and being able to freely talk about it especially with people like forever blooming with people who are so adamant and so dedicated to the organization and wanting to work and be their best to do that like we have a really great team but yeah I think that's just it's just really positive it's a really good environment <laughs> love that <laughs> like i wouldn't i wouldn't be on this episode right now if like i felt like i wasn't in a safe space like i feel like super welcomed and safe and this whole experience this past six months so yeah. Aww, <laughs> please if i could blush i would <laughs> 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 no, but I really I love that you said that because I think my whole entire goal when actually like creating Forever Blooming was of course just of course just um spreading the mental health awareness and making sure that people are educated but also just like within the team I think it's also just important to have a really good bond and not have that sort of work feel but more of just like we're all doing this together we're all doing it for a good cause we're all just trying to i don't know advocate for mental health and i think the Mm -hmm. passion behind it is what brings also the um bond behind everybody because everybody's passionate about it and so they're willing to actually do it besides like an actual job like at Publix I'm I don't want to work at Publix all the time because I'm just really happy of bagging people's groceries all the time it's just for the moolah but, um, yeah valid valid <laughs> but um yeah I'm I'm really happy you said that because I love that I'm, I'm glad that it was a positive experience for you well not was is a positive experience for you <laughs> Of course. <laughs> I said was as if literally after this episode I'll be like, okay, you're fine. <laughs> I'm done. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> so with that being said, um, I do want to say as far as just like your position in Forever Blooming, I think it's especially important. Um, and I also want to mention my experience in this. I think for us both, it's kind of really important to have this sort of experience because I feel like within the Latinx community and within the um, African American community, there is different sort of stigmas, but there's also that heavy mental health stigma on it. So uh, on each community, um, that is. So I feel like our position, just being here and doing what most people in our community wouldn't do is very powerful. Yes, perfectly (laughs) said. Oh, thank you. (laughs) Um, To the choir. So that being said, that does lead me to our next topic. Of course, I already talked about the uh, sort of how mental health stigma plays a role in the black community. So we are going to be exposed to a new side of the spectrum with the apparent stigmas, mental health stigmas, that is, within the Latinx community. And I do want to say some people might not know what Latinx actually means. And it's it's really simple, pretty much. <laughs> Latinx basically describes people of Latin American origin or descent. And it's basically a sort of gender neutral term. Uh, or a non-binary alternative to the words Latino or Latina. And I'm sure everybody has heard Latino or Latina in their lives, but we want to use Latinx just to be a little bit more exclusive to those who are non-binary and do not conform with this sort of binary system. 
that we have established in society. And I also want to say that it is different for everyone. I'm very black, so I am not going to do a good job at explaining this, but I know that, or I think I know that for different uh, Latinx people that they prefer different terms like they strictly want Latino or they strictly want Latina or Latine but Melody do you have any input on that? I personally prefer like the term Latinx just because it does enforce the plurality of the community and like acknowledging like you said like the gender neutral and non-binary people of the community um, I identify as Latina, but like whenever I address the whole community, I use Latinx. Um, yeah, I don't really have any like rebuttals against that <laughs> or anything. Okay. <laughs> of course, I just didn't want to really speak for your own experience, and I also know that it's different yeah. for everybody. Like, I know even within the African American community, people don't like the term African American, so that's. A lot of the time I just say black or sometimes sometimes people just like African. But you know, just putting that disclaimer out there, that's why we are using that term and that's what it means. So getting into that, we will be discussing a little bit about how mental health is sort of treated as something that is to be shamed or non-existent within the Latinx community and I will pass that on to you so yeah in the community mental health is pushed aside and even sometimes labeled as non-existent like i've heard comments such as depression isn't real real or like anxiety isn't real you know and i definitely think that has an effect on how people in the community communicate their feelings with those around them it's not easy to talk about your feelings when you aren't provided that safe environment or you've been shamed for them your whole I life. I totally understand that. I think um, I can sort of relate to that, especially like the black community also experiences that sort of uh, stigma as well. So I feel like a lot of that sort of lack of communication about mental health sort of leads to um, not being able to communicate it with anybody else because if you can't talk about it with your family why would you talk about it with like strangers or your friends or people that are just close to you that you hold dear do you ever feel that sort of lack of knowledge about how to even communicate properly of your feelings yeah for sure like even with some of like my best friends who i've known my entire life there's still things where i'm like Maybe I shouldn't tell them that I'm going through this or experiencing this because I'm not sure like how they're going to respond and I've always been very hesitant about opening up and being vulnerable with people just because of that reason. I wasn't able to talk about that at all growing up Mm -hmm. because mental health wasn't something that I knew about until I was in college and it was never properly addressed in my community and like within my family so definitely absolutely i think um also with me just growing up i feel like a lot of the time my mom was like we have to keep a lot of what we're dealing with inside like behind closed doors like Mm -hmm. i remember posting this um uh story on instagram and i was like y'all can you hit me up because like I'm crying (laughs) and I need some help, bro. And then my mother saw it and she was like, what you doing posting all your business on social media? I'm like, ah, keep in mind, I was like in middle school, I was like sixth grade, like baby status. So I was like, I just, I don't know what's going on. Puberty, (laughs) a lot is going on. So I don't know if you also kind of relate to that sentiment as well. I mean, for sure, like, mostly whenever I was in elementary, middle school, and high school, just kind of always trying to be positive. You know, toxic positivity Mm -hmm. was definitely a thing where I felt like I would have to go, just keep going and smiling Mm -hmm. and, like, nothing's happening when, in reality, like, there were times where I was in the restroom and I was just, I was just sobbing and crying and I was like, I don't know what's wrong with me. Uh. And just going through like very intense emotions at a very young age that I didn't understand Mm -hmm. and feeling like I couldn't talk about them so yeah for sure sure, definitely yeah (laughs) Yeah. I think um 
what a lot of people don't realize is that even though teenagers or just preteens in general have it easy because they're uh, they have food on their table they have a house hopefully that's that's just me generalizing um, I know that every situation is different but I feel like since people think that you have everything provided to you you don't have a lot of res as many responsibilities as an adult does and they just have to deal mm -hmm. with school that they don't realize that all of the sort of changes that you're going through especially if you're going through very tense emotions like you did like I did with like depression and anxiety and things like that it sort of minimizes those mental health struggles and makes you even just like embarrassed about them make you feel ashamed about them because you know that people aren't going to take you seriously just because of your age people aren't going to take you seriously just because they don't take mental health seriously in general and they might call you crazy or just think that you're just again crazy i don't know how, to, how else i can explain yeah. that so i um, don't i think that's the hardest part when dealing with mental health when your family isn't um as agree agreeable with it it's a struggle externally and internally because you can't go to anybody and you feel embarrassed and start to have a lot of internal mental health stigma which we did do a we did do an episode about that so you should check that out but <laughs> yeah. so quick promo quick promo <laughs> but, um, yeah has not been able to talk to somebody because of that sort of stigma with you and your family has that affected the way that you navigate helping yourself or anything like that i mean yeah for sure i feel definitely from whenever i was younger until now my family more specifically my parents have become a lot more understanding of what's going on in the world and like what is mental health and being more open to having those conversations but I definitely think there still is that little part of me from like whenever I was growing up where I felt like I wasn't supported mm -hmm. that definitely had an impact on how I handle myself now so like I can't necessarily say that like I have anxiety or depression mm -hmm. or like any mental health condition because I haven't really seeked out professional like a professional diagnosis and first of all because it's expensive and second for of real all, <laughs> for real <laughs> second of all I think there's like a part of me that's afraid of I guess the reality because like how am I gonna feel whenever my problems actually have a name for them mm -hmm. you know whatever I was going through like after having those feelings and those situations minimized by people around me like how am I gonna handle it now that there's a name mm -hmm. to it if that yeah makes, yeah it totally makes sense because I I um I have struggled with depressive and anxiety or depressive feelings and anxiety since middle school but I wasn't really diagnosed until like um I want to say like ninth ish grade but eighth grade ish but that being said just to relate to what you're saying when they did tell me my diagnosis I was like oh <laughs> that's a lot because <laughs> when you are just feeling these sort of emotions like Oh yeah, I'm just sad. Oh yeah, I'm nervous. I, oh yeah, I just have these symptoms. But when you're being attached to a label, it's kind of like there's a lot more attached to that label than the simple systems or symptoms that you were experiencing. Like, um, especially when you know that when people talk about depression, it's often not good. <laughs> so when you get that label, you're like, oh wow now i have a lot of crap to figure out especially regarding just telling people about my diagnosis or explaining how i'm feeling and just learning all these coping mechanisms on the journey to officially get better mm -hmm. and that's a lot of pressure <laughs> that's yeah. a lot of pressure and that being said um i also wanted to touch on one of your points about uh the not being able to seek professional help because of course it is expensive but second of all <laughs> um, I feel like due to a lot of that stigma 
a lot of people don't seek uh, professional help and it's not really just you. Um, in fact, approximately 34% of Hispanic slash Latinx adults with mental illness receive treatment each year compared to the U.S. average of 45%. And you might look at those numbers and be like, oh yeah, that's just like 11% off. No big deal. But if you really count the U.S. population and then narrow it down to that 45% and then narrow it down even more to that 30 four percent especially within a quote-unquote minority community then it's like it's it's big <laughs> it's <Yeah>. big <laughs> it's not that so, many people being able to do that for themselves right and it's an unfortunate thing because i feel like especially within minority community minority communities with just that struggle with uh poverty or just like health insurance and things like that um, a lot of times due to just like over overall problems like white supremacy and all that, but we're not going to get into that. That's a different, that's a different conversation. But whole other knowing, episode. yeah, yeah, it's a whole nother <laughs> episode. <laughs> but, um, just knowing that we have those added struggles and also the added struggle of the mental health stigma then it's very very difficult to receive treatment it's very scary to even uh, receive street treatment especially when you have this fear of just like being ostracized did you have any sort of uh feelings of being ostracized like you didn't fit in like you were just the black sheep because of the way that you were feeling oh most definitely because i mean even now like sometimes i'm sitting in like family events with you know my extended family um like more so those are the people that i don't really open up about mental health with versus like my immediate family they're kind of more aware of you know things but like whenever i'm sitting at like those type of family events i'm like like why like am i having these thoughts like i'm sitting here mm -hmm. like is anyone else having these thoughts and sometimes like i get like super in my head mm -hmm. and I'm you know like super in your head like negative thoughts are kind mm -hmm. of just happening as like there's other things happening around you and then I see like sometimes like my family smiling and obviously that's a good thing and but in my head I'm like well I smile too and like I still feel this way on the inside do they mm -hmm. feel this way do they not feel this way or sometimes I'm like why do I have to feel this way and mm -hmm. you know other people don't have to experience what i'm going through maybe they are you know and they're like the same thing that i'm going through where i don't necessarily talk about it and i'm vulnerable about it but i definitely feel like alone in those times mm -hmm. when that's happening i totally get that um i think i love that you touched on the point that you don't really know what's happening and like anybody can pretend to be happy every day they can show face and be like hey everybody i'm doing well how are you doing i'm just a life of the party but you really don't know what they're going through mentally because you know mental health conditions are just an invent a visible thing so i think it's just very important to um realize that you're probably not as alone as you think and it does not help with the sort of stigma around mental health within uh, minority communities that has stemmed over the time because even if there are more people than you think you're never really going to know because nobody really wants to talk about it yeah. and that's the unfortunate part about it <laughs> in continuation of just that sort of not wanting to talk about it not willing to talk about mental health um, issues there's also just like this ad additional need to separate completely from mental health issues and in a reported interview actually of 1254 community members from Argentina 69.9% of the respondents endorsed negative attitudes and social distance toward people with schizophrenia and other major mental health conditions and so when you have that lack of willingness to talk about mental health conditions and or just struggles in general it doesn't even have to be like depression anxiety or any any other um, diagnosis there's also just this sort of 
trend of oh they're just crazy leave them alone you don't want to get infected because <laughs> we do it oh my goodness <laughs> please i have heard that before <laughs> yeah. yeah i've never heard the infected part but honestly i wouldn't put it past people because they're def- there's like there is such a negative stigma behind mental health absolutely so but um that being said yeah there is a lot of sort of effects from the idea of thinking that mental health is non-existent or that mental health struggles should just not be talked about but there are more stigmas within the latinx community such as just like that sort of uh narrative of working hard and just completely completely disregarding mental health don't know why (laughs) why i repeated completely twice okay but um it's okay (laughs) do you want to talk a little bit more about that I mean, I feel like a prime example, unfortunately, of constantly, you know, working hard and kind of just trying to distract myself, but I feel like that definitely comes from comments that are made about me, like, if I have an off day, for example, or, like, I want to take a break, because I work, like, I work a good amount Mm -hmm. of hours, you know, (laughs) but if there's, like, a day where I want to take a break and, like, lay down and just sleep and watch tv all day there is that comment of being labeled as lazy it's just being labeled as lazy and being like oh you just sat on your butt all day blah 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 blah. so i feel like that kind of definitely plays a factor in disregarding mental health as well because you know there are days where i feel down and i don't want to work so me getting labeled as that doesn't I mean doesn't make me feel any better and there is always that that there's always that little voice inside my head that's like you still have to keep working like even if you feel bad you still have to keep working because this that was just the narrative that I grew up around and like that I saw people in my family experiencing like whenever things were bad or there were hard times people were just going 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 and going and I feel like there's just a there's a line between you know staying staying strong and avoiding your emotions Mm -hmm. so i mean for sure have you ever experienced like have you ever experienced that absolutely yeah i totally agree with what you're saying and just having that sort of experience that you have to continually keep going and going and going and going and it's just exhausting overall and I don't know why taking breaks and just taking care of yourself hasn't been as normalized as it should be because if you continually work and work and work, you're going to eventually get burnt out and that can last from like weeks to months because I went through like six months of burnout. (laughs) That was that was heavy. But um, yeah, I definitely also agree with that sort of. that sort of thought process of even when you are taking a break and being like yes I'm proud of myself for taking a break because I need this because I went working too hard and let me eat this ice cream let me eat this chocolate and watch this movie but then there's just like that sort of little voice in your head like you could be doing something more you could be changing the world right now you could be curing cancer but here you are just watching a movie (laughs) like what are you doing yeah So I definitely understand where you're coming from with that. That being said, I know there are many, many other stigmas regarding mental health, but we do want to just keep track of the time within this episode and not waste y'all time because we love you. But um, uh, there is just this sort of uh, other stigma around uh, Latinx men and their sort of view of mental health how they are viewed when they are having mental health struggles i know that we're both not qualified about this so we're just gonna briefly mention it and yeah (laughs) so do you have any comments about that yeah yeah because i mean although i can't speak from the male perspective i can definitely speak from like the outside looking in and what i've seen growing up and I feel like this kind of goes back to constantly working hard and disregarding 
uh, mental health as well as your feelings but i've seen the men in my family and even my like male friends growing up that they weren't very vulnerable with their feelings or whenever they would talk about their feelings or try to talk about their feelings they were often like oh you're a boy mm-hmm. like you can't cry like that's only for girls um like you have to be strong because you're a boy i was always hearing those narratives told to my cousins growing up and so it makes me think about how maybe that's affected the way that they are now and you know that kind of makes me reflect a little bit on like maybe how they handle their feelings um because of things that were maybe said to them 10 years ago in mm-hmm. a way where they can't really show emotion um but i mean that's really all that i can I, that's all really i can talk <laughs> about in terms of that <laughs> i think yeah i i definitely see what you're saying um i do want to mention briefly that um i think that uh it's especially harder when you do have that sort of pressure of not showing emotions not being vulnerable as a man and like that like you said that sort of thinking about a comment that you had heard 10 years ago and not being able to sort of process that because you block it out or try to move past it and not think about it and yeah that can definitely be a lot of uh pressure and a lot of struggle regarding mental health and i feel for that completely but um I definitely think that you guys instead should just look up some resources about Latinx men and how they deal with their mental health, what sort of pressures they have as a man dealing with mental health, because that issue is way too complex and we're both, again, not qualified to talk about it. So highly encourage you to uh, continue the discussion, continue the research, educate yourself about that because it's important to highlight that aspect. And lastly, before we move on to the next topic, I do want to say that um, as well as some internal uh, mental health stigmas within the Latinx community, there is external mental health stigmas that we have to address because I feel like a lot of the external stigmas can also affect how uh, different communities reflect and handle things. So um, some external stigmas and struggles of just seeking professional help can include just a lack of cultural understanding and by that I mean it's like having a white therapist and being black like me for example i have a white therapist and sometimes mm-hmm. our viewpoints are just not the same <laughs> because we come from different yeah, backgrounds they don't understand yeah <laughs> yeah they don't understand what you're going through been there <laughs> <laughs> really really you've been there <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> yes yes i had one therapist who was maybe around my age and maybe after like one like after two sessions i was like i don't think we're connecting or she's like fully understanding so i'm gonna head out and we'll find someone else but yeah definitely whenever i'm looking for a therapist i currently don't go to therapy right now we'll talk about that in topic three but um yeah whenever i was going to therapy I definitely was seeking out um, mm-hmm. like female Latinas who were able to understand what I was going through. But yeah. yeah, so I definitely understand what you're saying with that because as much as I love my therapist, she and I don't see eye to eye on certain things and that cannot be helped just because we come from different backgrounds. But shout out to my therapist. She's a real G. So <laughs> that being said, um, We can also just uh, account for the discrimination against minorities. I know that um, one of my fears when I was searching for a therapist that I could sort of personally relate to or get the best experience from, I had to consider that maybe they're an undercover racist and I don't know. So literally. (laughs) So that can also just 
uh, be an external struggle when it comes to uh, seeking help, when it comes to just mental health stigmas in general. And we have to account for that when we're talking about internal mental health stigmas as well. So that being said, we're going to get deep real quick. <laughs> we're going to get really deep and we're going to talk oh. about all about Melody's life. We're going to dissect every moment. We're going to get to all of her trauma. No, but <laughs> we're going to talk. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to talk about how the sort of in, uh, internal mental health stigmas have affected how Melody navigates life and how those sort of uh, thought processes have been affected. Mm -hmm. That being said, let's start with your childhood so definitely the stigma about like mental health struggles being minimized and not having that safe space to talk about my feelings because i was scared of being judged and misunderstood because you know there was that narrative growing up that mental health wasn't a thing you know i didn't even know what mental health was or like mm -hmm. you know that specific kind of umbrella term for all of these like depression anxiety schizophrenia ocd all of those things i didn't know about that until like i was in eighth grade and working through my childhood having those intense feelings it definitely was hard um mm -hmm. just because and you know i didn't know what to do i didn't know who to talk to and just kind of how to go about that as a young a young Lat Latina um, <laughs> in a family that never really talked about that stuff. I think um, I, do, I totally relate to what you're going through. I totally re relate to that sort of struggle with mental health, um, especially at a young age. And I also think that there were some external factors that also impacted my mental health. Like, of, score, of course school was one because there was a bunch of new changes and there was a bunch of new um, experiences that caused me to feel a lot of uncertainty and I do not like uncertainty at all. I do not like the gray area at all. <laughs> but um, I think in addition to that, um, I also was that, um, as I mentioned before, I was in that sort of constantly working mode, constantly um, trying to be better than the best, essentially. And having that sort of mentality that I have to work at 14, that it kind of impacted the way that um, I view life nowadays. It's it forced me to mature faster. It forced me to experience a lot of new experiences, but <laughs> but it also caused me to have that sort of mentality that everything is overwhelming, even though I have put that sort of pressure on myself, even though my family has put that sort of pressure on myself. It caused me to even disregard my mental health in general. So what sort of um, experience do you have with uh, working at a young age, if any? I mean, I definitely do. Like, whenever you were like, I started working at 14. I mean, I did too. That's exactly the time that I started working. There definitely was an impact on, you know, the way that I grew up and just like you were saying, having to grow up really fast because you were thrown into a world of, you know, having to be professional whenever you were 14 years old and having to learn how to speak professionally to other people at a very young age. And, you know, I do play a part in that because I it was my decision to work. So, I mean... I wouldn't say it's necessarily like it was my fault that all of that happened, but I mean, I definitely get what you're saying about being forced to face new experiences and like very intense 
experiences at a really young age. Like, why are, am I so stressed out when I'm only 14 years old? And I definitely agree with you that it does make me feel like there are things that are overwhelming right now. And I think that's also, I'm a product of like very quick burnout because I've worked for so long. Like I started working when I was 14 and I'm 22 now. So that's like eight years of just working, working, working. And it definitely, (laughs) yeah, it's definitely intense. It's a lot. But I think um, it also just, I mean, while it is sort of a good-ish thing to have good work ethic, but also be prepared for just like future careers, Mm -hmm. you also have to realize, again, it was such a young age and we also had school, we also had family, we also had internal um, issues that we had to work through and it's really a lot. So how do you think that sort of uh, mentality affected the way that you navigated high school or college, especially considering that you are Latina? We're getting into the recent and good stuff. (laughs) All right. I definitely, because I mean, I've just always been in that mentality of work hard and keep going. You know, we talked about in the previous segment about you know, not like you can't lay on your butt because, oh, you're lazy and you just have to keep going even though there are bad things that are happening and you're experiencing these bad things. Um, It definitely, I think, was more of an impact in college where I was able to understand and, you know, that's whenever I actually heard mental health get talked about talked about openly was in college and I was like oh like I like that like yeah I feel that way and I'm like experiencing that and there's other people who are going through this so I was more aware of it so definitely I do keep there is an instance so I was in an organization whenever I was in college and I was president of that organization And, you know, I loved it. I loved it so much. But on top of that, I was doing work and going to school full time. And, you know, there was instances where I felt really bad because I felt like I wasn't doing enough. And I felt Mm -hmm. like I had to keep going. And, you know, whenever I was at work or at school or at, like, my rehearsals, I was just like oh you're you're not doing enough like Mm -hmm. they like they don't like you like you're not fulfilling what they need to you're not fulfilling their needs basically and I definitely think even like even during those times where I was feeling really down about myself and down about you know the world I kept going and was distracting myself with work and not being able to sit in my positive experiences and Mm -hmm. you know I definitely think there also is a factor of you know I went to college so I was trying to fulfill my parents expectations rather than my own and you know Mm -hmm. I loved college and I loved going to college but there definitely was, oh, I have to go to college and I have to be at college and finish within four years because, you know, they didn't have that opportunity. So I should be grateful that I have the opportunity to go to a university and go to college. And I feel like that was really rambly, but <laughs> <laughs> we get you. We love it. We love it. Continue. <laughs> yeah, I think. Um... I feel like I really resonated when you were like not being able to celebrate positive moments and again just uh, fulfilling your parents expectations because first of all I feel like um, when you're just constantly going and constantly working no breaks no self-care at all you're kind of like just existing (laughs) and you're not really living the way that you 
should be the way that you should just continually enjoy every small moment continually enjoy every big moment moment and with that it can just pass life by like it will go extremely fast before we even know it. you are five years old going on freaking 20 so i think that sort of work mentality can damage your mental health as well as just like damage your sort of potential to how do i say this the potential to uh be your best self i guess be present in the moment be um helpful to your friends enjoy your moments with your friends enjoy just living the life that you want to live instead of constantly worrying if you're going to do better if you're going to do enough if you're going to fulfill your parents expectations and i i definitely uh feel you feel you when it comes to just like being a first gen student which i'm not a first gen student but um my brothers didn't go to college and so it was kind of on me to be the person like my mom went for eight years i don't know i don't even think it was eight year, years actually i think my mom has like four five degrees i i lose count every time but she she went to college for too long couldn't be me but um <laughs> that's sort of uh, exactly <laughs> that pressure to um be the sibling that goes to college be the uh, sibling that has a successful career and um, impresses my mother and there's consistently a lot of pressure in general and again it's just hard to live a fulfilled life when you're worrying about whether you're doing enough or whether you're um, being the best that you can be and more so yeah whenever I was saying there was an instance with an organization like in my school I didn't even go into detail about that because there was an instance whenever I was at rehearsal and, you know, I just kept going and going and going mm -hmm. and, like, having to work and, like, the weeks before I was experiencing those thoughts of being not good enough and not doing enough and all of those things. So I went to rehearsal, you know, smile on my face, just trying to keep pushing through, um, and, you know, the toxic positivity that I was kind of talking about, mm -hmm. like, oh, avoid these thoughts, like, pretend it's not happening, and be happy because you're here, you're doing this, even though this, like, these bad thoughts are happening. I went into rehearsal, and, like, I was trying to teach, and I was just really, because I would choreograph and, like, teach the group and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and I loved it, but since I was in this really bad headspace, I went in and was just super in my head and the thoughts mm -hmm. that were going through my head were just like everyone hates you like you're not mm -hmm. even a good leader you're not a good president you're not doing what you need to do and I feel like that ties into not being able to celebrate my successes like hello like I'm choreographing and like we've had these events and like I'm managing all these people but I just wasn't aware of that during that time so what happened was is I basically just like broke down mm -hmm. and I ran out and that was the first time that had ever happened in any instance in college and mm -hmm. I remember just running out and just crying and like two of my friends came out to console me and that's whenever I finally was able to have like an open conversation of what was going on and mm -hmm. you know like dive into those thoughts with someone who wasn't a therapist and mm -hmm. kind of being like oh I'm not you're not good enough and like all of these things but I mean I'm very grateful for those friends that came and checked on me because I already knew like from the beginning one of my friends was like are you okay and I was like yeah I'm fine just like smiling oh. during like rehearsal but I feel like that is definitely an effect that working too hard had on me is like keeping going mm -hmm. and trying to push through those negative experiences 
and I mean, you see where it, I mean that's where it got me. So, right. but yeah, and even the days to follow that like weren't as pretty. Like, I was questioning a lot about like why am I even in college and like why am I even here and like all of these other things and. I didn't really, you know, even ha- even though I had that opportunity after, like during rehearsal to kind of talk about those feelings, even the days to follow, I didn't really allow myself to fully process everything that had happened. I just kept working, going to school, and then had another breakdown, like literally two days later where I like ran out of class my teacher called on me and i ran out of class just crying and walked home crying and Mm -hmm. it was just the same thing like it just kept getting worse and worse where i just couldn't like i was like i can't handle it i can't do it anymore Mm -hmm. and that's where i was like oh maybe you have like a problem with working like you need to sit down and process your emotions And that finally was kind of a breakthrough moment for me where I was able to finally sit myself down and address everything that was going on and sit with my emotions and allow myself to heal throughout like a period of time. Because, you know, healing isn't linear, but I was finally Mm -hmm. able to kind of be more self-reflective about what I was going through and how I was treating myself and my body and being able to just take care of myself to the best of my abilities but I mean, yeah that definitely working too hard mm-hmm. is something that I mean is still happening you know how I said healing isn't linear definitely mm-hmm. working too hard had an impact on you know even how I handle things now because after that instance in college and like the breakdowns in front of like, like running home and like running out of rehearsal and stuff. I was able to heal and kind of, you know, as I was saying, sit down with myself. And, you know, for a good year, I was able to like be in control of my emotions. And then, you know, things happened this past year where it was a lot where, you know, I've never dealt with that extremity of you know people passing away in my family and having to process that much grief in one time because from March to September I lost five family members and it I definitely think plays a role in me having unhealthy coping mechanisms too because Mm -hmm. A lot of the times I work to kind of distract myself and you know I feel like I'm back where I am a year ago where I'm not able to fully process my emotions and understand what's going on and you know there's times where like I feel myself like thinking about it and like missing those people but I don't like really let myself cry I kind Mm -hmm. of just like I'm like okay like I don't need to be crying Mm -hmm. about this because why are you crying over people who are already gone? That's like kind of what my mentality was. And, you know, kind of still, I mean, it still is. It's just I work a lot. And like whenever I feel like even a inch of trying to process everything that's happened, I think I get a little bit scared and I just distract myself. Like I clean or like I work and yeah i definitely think like i mean it's been it's been tough but for anyone who's going through the same thing because i feel like a lot of people unfortunately can relate to this because you know there's a virus a very deadly virus that's going around and even though like some of those people i didn't lose to to covid it still i feel like is important to know that you're not alone and not being able to process your grief and not being able to understand like why it's happening happening to you specifically and to your family specifically Mm -hmm. um 
but yeah, just know you're not alone. And if you ever feel yourself trying to process that grief, just let it happen. Don't avoid it because then it's all just going to build up and you're going to be like me, like running out of rehearsal or something again. <laughs> but yeah, I really just was completely entrapped and just absolutely feeling for you, absolutely relating to a lot of the things you discussed, just like those unhealthy uh, coping mechanisms with working 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 just to avoid everything that you're feeling i definitely understand that and i feel like it also sort of gives you a boost like oh yeah i'm being productive despite all these bad things happening yeah. and i'm checking off my to-do list and just mm -hmm. doing everything being the being a boss you know yeah. but uh but it's like in no, the long term you're not being yeah a boss yeah because you gotta handle your feelings <laughs> like <laughs> Right, a real boss handles their feelings. Exactly. <laughs> but, uh, but um, yeah, it's it's heavy. It's really heavy. But trying or taking time to unlearn the coping mechan unhealthy coping me mechanisms that you have consistently used for your whole life, I guess, or for me at least, it it can be very very hard. But as you mentioned that mental health is not linear and even if you fall back into those same unhealthy coping mechanisms you can always come back and try your hardest to just continue to unlearn those mechanisms and uh, eventually it won't even take uh, a snap of the fingers to just not um, relapse back into those unhealthy mechanism coping mechanisms so as Melody said, you are not alone, and there is hope for your future, so remember that. And while I would love to just take a moment to absorb myself in your story, <laughs> I just want to ask you this one final question to uh, end off the episode before the closing remarks. What sort of changes do you think you want to see? What do you want the next generation to experience I definitely think you know even myself having this conversation on the podcast and openly talking about the experience that I had with trying to understand mental health and even though I don't have a mental health diagnosis I think this is a push to me being able to have more open conversations about mental health specifically with my family and my like aunts and uncles and opening those conversations to see what they're going through. I definitely think that's one thing that I would like to see happen in the community is more open conversation. And I feel like this is a start to even the role that I'm playing in my community and definitely wanting to see more open-mindedness to mental health issues and not being ashamed to talk about them, not creating that stigma around being crazy because you're experiencing these mm -hmm. thoughts and things. So I feel like that comes just with baby steps, you know, like it starts with me mm -hmm. and me telling my brother or like me telling my younger cousins, like, is this like, are you feeling it? Like, are you feeling this way? Like, you can talk mm -hmm. to me about it and just giving them that safe space to talk about that because I didn't have that growing up. You know, I didn't have that at 15 and now I can provide that for my brother and for my younger cousins, so yeah. Absolutely. That was powerful, man. <laughs> that was powerful. But um, yeah, as, as she said, it really is just baby steps. And as my therapist said, just shouting out my therapist once again <laughs> um, if the conversation is uncomfortable then you are doing something right yes. it is not going to be easy you will internally vomit but that's a good thing <laughs> just push on and try to converse what you are feeling try to hear out what other people's feelings are feeling despite um 
any sort of stigmas that may be there um, because it's better to try to converse at least rather than just dismissing um, the conversation of mental health. And some other steps you could take would just be to continually educate people. When you hear somebody say, oh, you're crazy, why are you feeling that way? Or stop feeling that way, you don't need to cry, you don't need to feel this way, just push, push on, keep working, do whatever you gotta do to avoid the way you're feeling. Just be like, what are you talking about, bruh? <laughs> no, but <laughs> try, to, uh, try to educate them and make them aware that these issues are important because uh, mental health is just as important as physical health. And if you have a horrible mental health, that will impact you physically. So it's important to educate others and try to find a therapist that you can relate to if you are Latino or Latino or Latina, then you can find a Latinx therapist and just encourage involvement in mental health related issues with your family. Try to get them involved as much as possible because that will then with baby steps alleviate the sort of stigma that is within the community and that could just be simply doing coping mechanisms together like hey you want to meditate or <laughs> or you want to journal or something or maybe even if you want to if you want to do a big step you can go to therapy family therapy or attend mental health events anything like that or one really really important thing um was a very interesting tip that i found it's also good to talk to a primary care physician rather than a mental health provider for first because I feel like a lot of people will trust their doctor and what they're saying rather than taking the first step to talk to a mental health provider because therapists are in itself stigmatized and doctors aren't so I mean yeah. <laughs> if you report to them first they'll be more accepting of the idea of um, getting better help, especially when a doctor can refer you to uh, more professional help, such as a mental health provider. So, with that being said, Melody, do you have any last remarks? I just want to say thank you for having me here and allowing me to have this conversation in an open and safe space. Um, you know, I haven't really talked about like any of that stuff you know about like grief specifically so this was definitely a step for me to kind of process everything um mm -hmm. but and like you know it's a very good self reflection as well because as i was saying things i was like whoa i was like i need to fix some of these things and this is what i could be doing um for my community and you know, having these conversations. So I'm just very grateful that you've given me this opportunity to talk about all of these very great topics. And yeah, just thank you for having me. <laughs> of course, it was wonderful having you. I love the conversation and willing to have you anytime back if you want. <laughs> but um, yeah, as Melody said, um, it's important to take baby steps and address what you're going through. Because once you recognize what you are going through, that is literally the first step to getting better. So, yeah. Ending this episode off with a positive note. That sometimes doesn't happen. I love when it ends off on a positive note. <laughs> All right. So, that being said, we will have our closing remarks. Unfortunately, we have to end this episode. But, as you guys know... Um, our website is bloompod.wixsite.com slash podcast if you want to check out more about us. In our extra section, you can find the research and transcript for this episode. Our podcast guest form is in our episode section if you want to be on Forever Blooming, as well as our audience spotlight form where you can ask for any advice to be featured in one of our episodes, which is very exciting. <laughs> you can find us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, all at Forever Bloom Pod, and TikTok at Forever Blooming Podcast. And if you want to check out Melody, you can also check out her Instagram, which is Mellow the Panda. Absolutely love that name. And our email is management at foreverbloompod.org. Let us know your thoughts, questions, and how we can improve the podcast because we love hearing from you. 
and be sure to check out our uh, card, which is card with two, o- two O's, fbpod.card.co for all of our easy, accessible links. And make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share with your friends if you enjoyed this episode. And before you like, comment, and subscribe, and share, be sure to check out fbpod.card.co, but with two R's, excuse me, I said two O's, Um, and make sure to have a great day, afternoon, or night whenever you're listening to this. Thanks for tuning in.